Hi, this is Tom, and this is where we left in our last lesson about the patterns of a parabola. And in this video, we are going to try the exact same process, but I purposely picked what I think is a challenging example, because it, it requires us to pay attention to all the little details. But if we're careful and thorough, I think we can do just fine. So here we go. The parabola we're going to look at is y equals negative one-half x squared minus x plus nine halves. So let's begin this problem and we're going to take a look at it first. Um, we'll, we'll Actually, we'll do it this way. We'll find the vertex and I'm going to show you two ways. Vertex. So we're going to complete the square so I'm going to just take a little bit of a liberty and put the 9 halves on the left hand side right off the bat. So I have negative 9 halves plus y equals negative 1 half x squared minus x. Okay, now remember, this is the key, is that this term here, the a term, which is negative 1 half, it needs to be 1 before you complete the square. It needs to be 1 before completing the square. Or completing the square. So we can do that. And we do that by multiplying every single term, every single term by, in this case, negative 2. So I'm going to write that out. So I have negative 2 times negative 9 over 2 plus this is going to be a, a negative 2 times the y. Then I'm going to have a negative 2 times the negative 1 half x squared and the negative x also is multiplied by negative 2. Now this should clean up pretty well. If working from left to right I have the negative 2 times negative 9 halves is going to be a positive 9. And then minus 2y. This is going to equal 1x squared, which is what we wanted. And then that's going to become plus 2x. So now we can take 1 half of the b term, which is now 2. So 1 half times 2. This is 1. And then we square it. So 1 squared is 1. We add the 1 to both sides. So I have, and I'll do that in red like we did last time. I'm just going to include it right. I probably should have given myself a bit more space. Actually, I can, I can, oh, I can do that. There. So now I've got a little bit more space so I can make my 1 fit just perfect. Plus 1 on the right hand side. And we also need to do that on the left hand side. So now let's clean up what we've written. And here's what we have. We have 1 plus 9, that's 10, minus 2y equals this x plus 2x plus 1 is the perfect square of x plus 1 squared. We subtract the 10 from both sides. Uh, oops, equals, and so now I have negative 2y equals parenthesis x plus 1 squared minus 10. And now our last step is to get y by itself with just a 1 in front of it. And I do that by multiplying everything by negative 1 half. So this is going to be a negative 1 half times negative 2y it's going to be a negative one-half times x plus one squared minus ten times negative one-half. Then on the right hand side I have y equals and re remember we just leave the negative one-half out in front times x plus one squared this becomes plus five. And now the vertex we found Vertex is negative 1, 5, 
And that also gives us the axis of symmetry and the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. Okay, the, the last piece here to do is to find our intercepts and then we'll graph this. So here we go. Our x, uh, let's start with a y-intercept. So our y-intercept is easy in that we just plug 0 back into the x's. And so if we look at our original equation, we're going to use this one way up here. So let's plug that back in. Oops. Okay, so now I'm going to take negative 1 half times 0 squared minus 0 plus 9 halves. Well, that's very simply 9 halves. And so our y-intercept, our y-intercept is 0 comma 9 halves. Now our x-intercept, I'm going to use my standard form, this piece right here, to find my x-intercept. So that's going to be 0 equals negative 1 half times x plus 1 squared plus 5. Okay, so we subtract the 5 from both sides. Negative 5 equals negative 1 half x plus 1 squared now we multiply both sides by a 2, and I'm going to just write it right here. So I'm going to multiply the right side by a negative 2, and we're going to multiply the left side by a negative 2 as well. And then when I clean up my results, I have 10 equals x plus 1 squared. Okay, now let's insert a step here. We're going to take the square root of both sides now. So when I do that, now you have this plus or minus the square root of 10 equals x plus 1. And so now I subtract my 1 from both sides. And my intercepts are at negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 10. Yeah, but there they are. And so we can say x-intercept, there's two x-intercepts at, and we're going to just write it once. We'll write it as negative 1 plus or minus square root of 10 comma 0. Now, remember, the square root of 10 is an irrational number meaning you can't write it as a fraction. It's a non-terminating decimal with a pattern that never repeats. So we don't, we can just make a quick guess. We know the square root of nine is three, so we know the square root of 10 is just a little bit more than three. So let's keep that in mind now when we do take our last step, and our last step is the graph. So I'm gonna bring this up, and we might have to zip up and down once or twice to reference our numbers that we found. But let's graph this. Okay, here's our graph paper. And we're going to make our graph. I'm going to come way up. And then we're going to go way down. And then come far to the left. Pretty far to the right. Now, if you remember, our, we had a few things. The, the first one that we really needed was the vertex. And let's go back and look at where our vertex was, or is. Our vertex is negative 1, 5. Okay, so I'm going to have to do something here, and I'm premeditating this. Because a is a half, we're going to need half increments. So each box on my graph is actually only going to be half of a unit. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 
if we go down to the bottom on our x-axis, we'll have one, two, three, and like that. We'll continue out. So negative one, five is right here. So let's graph it. Okay. So our first point, negative one comma five, is right there. Now, from here, we can begin. We know that what we do is we move left or right. Let's go right. We're going to move right one unit. So in the last time we did it in orange, so let's do that again. It helps the repeat processes. I go right one unit. And then I multiply one times a. But remember in this problem, a, a comes from two places you see it. Here's a. And up at the very beginning of the problem, you also had a right here negative one half. So we're going to go one times negative one half to get negative one half. Well in the previous problem we went over one up one because a was one. Well a negative number means now you go down a half of a unit. So that's going to put me right here. And there's the next point on my parabola. Okay, now from there, we use the exact same pattern. We go over one. I'm going to move this piece over a little bit so that we don't get a big mess here. I'm just going to scoot it over. Okay. So now I go, again, I go over one. And then if you recall, the next move is three. The next odd number times a, which is negative one half. So now we're going to move negative three halves. So we're going to go one, two, there's three half units. So we're going to go down to there. So here's our next point on the parabola. And now if you remember, again, we go over one full unit. And then our next move is going to be the next odd, one, three, five. So five times negative one half. So that's negative five halves. And so we go down one, two, three, four, five halves. And since we have the space, and it's kind of fun, I think, let's go over one more unit. And then we're going to go the next odd, which is 7, so times negative 1 half, negative 7 halves. So we're going to go down, here we go, ready? 7 units. We're going to go over 1, then we go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units. And we could keep going, but you begin to see. And now, let's do this. The axis of symmetry, we said, was right here at negative 1. And because it's a parabola, if we know one half, we really know the other half. And you could, or you could repeat the pattern and go over 1, down a half. You could go over 1, down 3 halves. And that would take us to right here. Notice that we're 1, 2, 3, four units this way, one, two, three, four units this way. And we can continue this. And soon, the final result is that now we've drawn, graphed this parabola. And that is about as difficult of a problem as you could have for graphing a parabola. Now, before we close it down, let's just see how we did it. You could keep going. This, this one's going to be over here, and then down to here. And there's our picture, and this just goes on forever if you need it to. And notice that we said we had x-intercepts at negative 1 plus the square root of 10. Well, here's negative 1. Let's do this. Uh, I'm going to do this in magenta. So if I started at negative 1, if I move over, if I add the square root of 10, that's going to be a little bit more than 3. So negative 1 plus a little bit more than 3 should be a little bit more than 2. And look at that right there. 
you can see that that's where we cross. And if you go to the left, you take negative 1 and you subtract a little bit more than 3, it should be a little bit more than 4. So, whoa, let's double check. Did we do that correctly? Let's extend our x-axis. So I'm going to start here. Let's draw this line out. Here's negative 1. There's negative 2. Let's see if we're going to make it. Here's negative 3. And we said a little bit more than negative 4. And sure enough, we were right. And that is how you use the patterns of the parabola. Thanks for watching.